Hello, it's Ian again from Valley Craft in Aberbargoid and I'm here to show you the second card in my February 2011 class. So the first thing we need is, for this card is a sheet of A4 linen card and a sheet of red card for the matte and layering. So I'm going to cut the linen card first and as per the first class, I'm actually going to cut it to 148 millimeters. And this 148 piece becomes my base card for the base. And then I need to cut the red card also to 148 millimeters. So that becomes extras. And then with the rest of the red card, I'm then going to place it in landscape again and I'm going to cut this to 105 millimeters and that's the sheet that's 105 and then I need to take the other half of the linen card and cut that to 105 with it in landscape as well. So that is sort of spare. Now the little piece I have here which is 105 by 148, I now need to cut a two centimeter strip off this one edge down here. Okay, so that strip becomes a two centimeter strip, and with this cutter, I actually take the measurements from this side when I'm cutting small measurements. Okay, so that's the two centimeters, which is 20 millimeters, and that should fit along the the actual base of your card like that. So there's my die, so I'm placing that face down and then I'm taking the top mat, putting it into my big shot and taking that through and that will cut, cut out my scallop circle out of my die. So they are the four pieces we actually need. So now we need to take our red piece, our white little strip and our scallop circle and we need to place this on the card like so so that we can get an idea of where the strip needs to be stuck so I'm then going to turn the linen paper over and I'm just going to put some double sided tape over and then I'm going to peel off the back I'm going to just balance out my scallop circle into the center so I know the way I'm going to put my strip be absolutely square so that is like that and now I'm going to cut this with the decorative edge and the decorative edge I'm using today is the Victorian I'm actually going to cut it at five millimeters off each and every edge and five millimeters on this cutter is right to the edge of the grey of the mat that it cuts on and I'm going to do this on all four ends. This is the one. You may have to go over this a couple of times or make sure that you put plenty of pressure on to cut through. Okay so if I place that on the card there now you can actually see that it has a lovely decorative edge so now we come into the the topper side of the card which is the scallop circle and we're actually going to stamp onto the scallop circle the scallop circle is with a linen card which reacts lovely with the watercolor and what we're going to use for the watercoloring is a distress ink, the one I'm using today is fired brick and what I'm going to do with this I'm using the same heart as I did in the first card and I'm just going to ink that up lovely and I'm just going to place this on a, wherever I want it on the topper you could use other stamps as well so that 
That's the image there. But I also need to dab my ink pad onto my glass mat, which will allow me to take some colour from there and place it onto my heart. So first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of water to some of my ink on here. And you can take a little bit off your finger to dry it. And then I'm just going to start working the colour of the heart. So I'm just going to do that. What we're going to do is take a little bit more colour and colour the front heart. Colour the front heart slightly darker than the front heart to give it a bit more of a dimension. So I've coloured the front heart darker than the back heart and now what I'm going to do I'm going to add some shading now where there should be shading on the heart. So I'm going to add more colour to my brush to make it more potent. I'm just going to add a little line of colour down the one side and I hope the camera is picking this up for you. And I'm just going to add a little bit more colour down this side. And also because there's a little bit of a shadow where this heart would come over. And then what I need to do is take all the water, get lots and lots of water onto my brush, and then I'm going to blend the darker colour from the edge. Like that. And if it's not quite blending, just take a little bit of colour and add that to it. And you're just going to add a little bit more. And you just build up your colours until you're happy with the finished article. So that is actually my heart's all coloured in now. And that's a simple way of taking your dye based inks and using it as a watercolour. So now I'm going to show you a little tip for those people who have plenty of white ribbon at home and but need a different colour. Um, I've got a, 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 a three millimetre satin ribbon here. And I'm just going to pull a fair length off and I'm going to cut it. And now I'm going to colour my ribbon with a pearl marker. Now I've chose a ruby red colour today, but you can choose any colour at all. And to do this, I just need to hold the end of my ribbon. Place my pearl marker onto the ribbon and just slowly, slowly pull it through and the ribbon will start to take on the colour of the pearl marker. And as you can see, I've got a lovely red ribbon. So now we're going to put this card together and finish off with all the scoring and stuff like that. So I'm going to take the, the A5 sheet of linen card, which was the sheet that was 210, which is 210 millimetres by 148 millimetres. And we're going to put that into our multi-score board. And we're going to fold it to half fold A5 again. So as I said before, always turn the card over and score it from the opposite end as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my ribbon that we coloured with the Pro Marker and I'm going to cut a little length of it to actually go through the centre of that card. So I'm going to cut my bit of ribbon and I've got now I've got that there. And then I'm going to turn that over, I'm going to make sure it's through the centre, I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to take my foam pads and I'm going to 
cut two little pieces first of all so that I can place my ribbon around and actually lock those pieces of ribbon in with my foam pads and once you've stuck the one side you can then turn it over just to make sure that your ribbon is straight and then turn it back over and stick your card on the back like so if you find your ribbon is a bit too long just take them off and that will leave you with that there Right, so now we're going to finish off with the foam pads to the corners. A piece along there and a piece in the middle just to give it stability in the centre. Which gives you that. I'm going to peel off the back end, which is the pouring part of card making. And this is where I'm going to make sure that my card is open in the right way. I'm doing this so you can see. I'm going to place my red piece central to the front of that card there. And now we come to fit new scholar. And the scholar we're going to fit with a few foam pads as well. And again, keeping away from the edge so that we don't see the foam pads while people have it on their mantelpiece or table. And we can place that at whichever angle we like to have that. Which is like that. And then with the ribbon I have left, I won't need all that, so I'm going to cut a little piece of that and I'm going to tie a little bow along the front of that. And any other little white bits I can just trim off and that becomes my nice little card there which you can actually embellish with little gems as I have on the other sample card which we will show you in a second at the end of this video. Thanks for watching how to make the second card. Hope you enjoyed it as I have, and I hope you look out for the third card, which will be on shortly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>